getting Veron Veronique, Veronique Cardon. I even like that accent when she speaks a French accent. It goes with it. It sounds good. Uh, she has a good thing going about cognitive behavior, diet portion, and she's had a lot of success. And now we're bringing a return. This is your third time on Breezing with Beerman. Or Beerman. more. Who or knows? more. This is Jennifer, with a very famous Jennifer Weiss, <laughs> with Peter Voronsky, who is writer of the New York Times bestseller, Sons of Cain, the history of serial killers from the Stone Age to the present. Fascinating topic. It's all over the media these days, serial killers and everything. It is indeed. Thanks for having, having us on. Yeah. Well, let's just do a quick catch up here. For those who didn't know, uh, maybe you want to tell the audience how we got connected about this, Richard Cottenham and your search, and then how Peter got involved. Or you, you want, want me to tell it? Tell it. Oh, me tell it? Fine. Yeah, okay. do, the, do the rundown, the short version. Short version, very short. Um, I, Long time ago, I pumped gas. And this man named Willie Russell in Princeton owns a gas station oh, now. Oh, wow. Anyway, <laughs> a lot of personal details. <laughs> and then he married Jennifer Weiss, who I met in improv class when you were dating. Anyway, Jennifer was adopted, found out her bio biological mother with an Iranian expat family, rich, but they, had their, they lost everything, left with the shop. The mom became a high-class prostitute at 23, was killed by the serial killer, the butcher of Times Square, the, whatever you want to call him, Richard Cottenham. Through your investigation, you found out um, that where he was, he's in Trenton State Prison, you started a relationship with him. And you want, like I say, your own personal quest about family, you know, death, forgiveness and everything. A lot of things are tied We in. talk about a lot. Yes. And he might be your father. We don't know. Through this, Peter Voronsky, who's written this, you know, exciting book, you have a PhD from in history from the University of Toronto, Toronto, as they say, you two have gotten involved. So where are we now with Richard Cunningham, the book, and everything else? Who wants to go first? Well, uh, you, you know, it's 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 been an amazing journey because, of course, the morning that Jennifer's mom was murdered, 1979 in, this, in New York, theater. in New York City, um, I was checking into that very same hotel and that briefly encountered Richard Cottingham, which is where my career as a historian of serial homicide began. Because you know, you were just doing, you were working for a film company, and you, yeah. I had absolutely no interest in serial killers. That word didn't exist in 1979. I mean, it existed in the police community, but mm -hmm. certainly I was not aware of it and wasn't in popular um, culture. And, and, and so I, as I said, I, I collide with Richard Cottingham as he's fleeing the scene without knowing what he had just done literally in the elevator doors of that hotel. And, and you know, slowly I became aware of what had uh, occurred there because, you know, he had beheaded two women. One of them was Jennifer's biological mom. He set the torsos on fire um, and he ran off with the heads, oh. uh, which had never been found. He never revealed where those heads were. Uh, and, and so, you know, 40 years later, I'm writing about serial killers, haven't been reading about them, trying to figure out what it was in my life, in my trajectory, that made me cross paths with, with him. And so as I'm finishing Sons of Cain last summer, um, or two summers ago now, uh, just as, you know, five days away from pushing send. This woman. She this is woman. on the phone. You know, and she introduces herself as the daughter of Dita Godarzi, who I, I knew that she had given up a baby 18 months before her murder uh, up for adoption. And always wondered, you know, what happened to that little girl? Does she know, um, you know, the fate of her mother or who her mother was? And there she was, 40 years later, on the, on the phone calling me. and. Um, and Jennifer asked me to come down to help her to try to put together this this narrative that Richard Cottingham has has been um, you know revealing to her in these meetings that she has mm -hmm. been bravely taking uh, with him and and of course Cottingham prefers not to talk to males um, you know he likes getting visits from from women if he can. Uh, but He's Jennifer. never had any other visits other than me. Right. From a friend. He doesn't have any other. So what were you searching for again when you went to see him? I wanted to know the details of his relationship with her, if it was a random killing or if he had known her. Um, and I wanted to know what happened during the trials. I wanted to know, I wanted to know every detail I could about 
what he did not only to my mom and that unidentified woman, but other women. It just seems strange that there wasn't much info about him mm -hmm. and not many people knew about him. So I wanted to be a mine hunter and just seek him out and find out about him. Even though you're dealing with a, a professional liar, a sociopath and stuff. I also wanted to find my mother's skull. So if, mm. if I could do that, I'd probably feel a lot better because I wanted to find her initially. And then I found out she got killed. And I didn't, it didn't sit well with me that no one found her skull. Right. I was the only one that cared about it. So I came up out of the woodwork to say, hey, help me find the skull, old man. And you do the first dig. Mm -hmm. And this leads to this website you told me about, about what's it called, New Jersey Murders? or something? New Jersey Girl Murders dot org. Um, because of course, in the period that from, <clears throat> when he was a teenager to when he got arrested at the age of about 31, 32, um, there are at least 36 unsolved murders in New Jersey of young women, sexual murders. Makes a mother nervous <laughs> you know, we have a daughter coming up. Yeah, you know, with women that have gone missing. Um, and, and I'm sure this more than 36, we've been able to track down 36. Um, some of them, are uh, suspected victims of, of Richard Cottingham. Some we don't know. Uh, In the cold cases then? Still. These are all cold cases. Um, you know, Richard Cottingham was convicted in 1980 for five homicides. Uh, eight years ago, he confessed to a sixth one, going back to the 1960s. So we know that he has been killing at least between 1967 and 1980 when he's arrested. He claims that he's killed over 80 women in different parts of the United States. How old is he now? He's 73. Looks like and, he re and he remembers. He, I mean, he's lucid. I think his memory is pretty damn good. So if he wants, if he, let's say if he wants, he could say, who others in other states and he stuff mentioned like that. He, he, he does well with where the bodies were left. He can mm -hmm. help mm -hmm. out with everywhere he left a body. Has any of this been proven though, or they don't have the time or the resources? That was another issue. Um, it's time and resources is, is a big issue, right? Um, you know, police departments are always overworked. Um, <laughs> the other problem, of course, is now these cases are getting so old that family members are passing away. And, wow. and often these cases, cold cases, require family to be constantly pushing at police to investigate. And of course, as, as the families dissipate and people mm -hmm. pass away, these homicides start getting moved, um, you know, further to the back of the shelf. Girls are forgotten. Girls are forgotten. People mm -hmm. are for, forgotten. So we're, um, you know, I put up this website. There's a, there's a kind of interactive map showing where each homicide took place. And as I say, this is just the state of New Jersey. Uh, and, you know, people have been sending us information, helpful information, because, um, you know, a lot of these cases, uh, other people have looked into them. There are, you know, journalists who looked into them and just gave up, family members. So right. we're okay. collecting as much data as we can to breathe life into that. We could bring to him. You know, his problem is is he doesn't remember the order in which he killed people, and he doesn't remember who they were. Uh, he just remembers the crime scene itself. Mm -hmm. Quickly, though, for the audience, though, before I get into your relationship with my wife, if there's anything to say, what's the, if you give a, distill the general background of serial killers? What do they all have in common for the audience to know? What would well, I, th I think the most common thing we have is a trauma when they're very young, um, and then a long history of uh, this kind of fantasy that they nurture. You know, the average serial killer will start around the age of 28, but their fantasies are formed sometimes as early as the age of five. So they sometimes for 20 years, they kind of gestate these, these, these fantasies and begin to take them out um, on the road to test the fantasies in real life until they, you know, cross that line. And then they slowly stop, you think, testosterone or something, they seem to slow down, you said. 
Or well, as they approach their 40s, in the case of psychopaths, now, not all serial killers are psychopaths, and, and certainly... A psychopath is someone who's what? What's well, a psychopath is someone who has no sense of empathy. Um, they're or kind of bandit. dead inside. Dead they, don't, they don't feel it. Right. Um, uh, you know, so it's, <clears throat> well, somebody described it as somebody who knows the lyrics, but not the music. So, so, um, but again, not all psychopaths are, are, are serial killers and not all serial killers are psychopaths, but um, that's a big part of it. Obviously, a lack of a sense of remorse, a uh, lack of a sense of guilt, um, uh, the need to live double lives, um, the need for excitement, all these things, d the need for danger, for taking risks, all these things characterize serial killers. Wow. What about you two? Well, do you have questions? No, no, I'm, I'm listening. For yeah, but what about you? Two? So, what do you think of Jen what are you two getting from each other? And where is this going from? I mean, that's what I'm still. Well, I think Jennifer, um, uh, you know, is is it's 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 almost kind of on the you know mythical level, right? I mean, she's looking for her mother's severed head. I mean, you're talking about like a Greek tragic story that that you know is is biblical in its scale. Um, and, and he's revealed to her where, you know, there's two heads there, where those heads are buried. And we, we've, you know, we've met with um, police authorities. They've um, taken us out to the scene. And, and so they've surveyed the scene. What happens next, we don't know yet, uh, because now certainly the frontline detectives, um, they need to go to their bosses. Um, you know, one of the problems here is... Can we mention those special mushrooms they found at the scene where we believe the heads are buried? There's special mushrooms that only come up when there's decomposition in the soil. So that yeah, was they were good... pretty skeptical um, until we went to the actual scene. And, and of course, um, he had described it in an email that he had written to Jennifer. And um, I'm not, um, you know, a, a horticulturalist, uh, but he had described a certain type of plant uh, that the detective immediately knew. Uh, and, you know, he points out, look, there you it know, is. there's that plant that he described. So, so they have really. not do, done any digging or anything yet? Not yet, no. And when was and, that? And, and that's going to... Three, three, four weeks ago we met oh, uh, okay. with... recently. Oh, yeah. okay. So Bergen so County and New York City, which is... Both. Both. both, yeah. Um, so there, there are some um, hmm. interjurisdictional issues, of course. Um, now they need to go to the bosses because to dig, uh, that's going to take up a lot of resources. And of course, the problem is, is you know, in the case of her mother, it's not a cold case anymore. He's sitting in in Trenton Penitentiary so during his time for that murder. So right. it's not like they they need these heads. But know? educationally, I thought it would be a good idea for kids, uh, students of forensics, uh, criminology majors, people interested. Uh, educationally, it would be great to gather some students together who would be interested in working on something current involving a well, real, real, real hands-on. And, you know, I think that would be an avenue that I'd like to It's not for everyone, though. <laughs> Some people can't right. handle it. We'll see. Yeah. Some people go to school, though. And Just for that. The right. Arch Street Project at Rutgers, for instance, I was going to reach out to that woman because it's just finding like-minded individuals who would be interested. Mm -hmm. you know, it's a specific thing Yeah, and it's doing. a skill and it's important. You know, just tech, you know the technical right. problems here. And it's important. Right. You know, but the technical Did, problems are that the, the, the heads have been there 39 years. So, so I was going to ask about that. In, yeah. what, in what condition are you going to find those heads? Uh, well, they're in a vinyl bag. Okay. So they, they're, they're, all the biological material is there is, you know, With vinyl is not biodegradable. Four hands. Two yeah. heads. And severed hands. Two so pairs. So there, the vinyl is going to be there definitely. And handcuffs. Maybe he threw handcuffs in there as well. He said they're definitely in there. He said okay, definitely. Yeah. There you go. So, so mm -hmm. the problem is, of course, if you're going to use, for example, if you're going to deploy dogs, you need a special kind of dog. This isn't a dog that is seeking out a fresh cadaver. Um, you need historical dogs that are used, for example, to find um, MIAs in the Pacific. Um, you know, dogs can actually scent. Um, a trace of a corpse from 22,000 years ago. Wow, so they, they even found an archaeological, archaeological on, on oh, stone. Right. Okay. So, but wow. you need the right kind of dog. And, and, and so certainly I know that authorities won't have those dogs. 
those dogs have to be brought in. So you think that they are taking longer because as he's already serving in jail, there's no the rush to find the well, criminal? there's current killers out there killing right now. Right, right. Crimes so happening right now that are current, that are really important. Mm -hmm. And I right. understand that. That's yeah. why I thought students uh, right, would right. be a really good avenue. Oh. What about you, Joe, Jennifer? What about you? The fact some people will say it's ghoulish. It's a weird fat quest. It, what do you? What do you? you know, um, it was so hard to live with the story oh, right, and right. having to tell it and having to use words like decapitation and serial killer and prostitute and Forty Second Street and wigs and secret lives and sec second names. But does, does it define your life or something? Why? Did no, you but feel it's it in, your intriguing life? because right oh. now there's shows called. Specifically, mine hunters. People right. have told me you gotta watch this. This is what you're doing right now. And oh, I, I see. I, I see. said I don't watch TV since 2006. I do my own thing. You know, I do art. I've got the kids. Right. I kind of just do my music and my art and deal with the kids. What about Rich Cottenham? Now, you thought maybe he could be your father. Is yes. that another freak out to you? Is he? What's going on with that? Well, the DNA test that will reveal that will be in the book. Oh, coming, another so. book on this. Which book? It's. Coming up. The next book. Oh, okay. When is it so coming as, 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 you know, my book ends, the last chapter uh, it's about is Jen. with Jennifer and, and, of course. And when is that book coming out? So I hope as early as uh, that I'll turn in the manuscript this September. Uh -huh. So next year. Um, Serial killers need hugs, too. And what is the name of right the now, new book? The, t the working title right now is Raptor, The Life and Crimes of Richard Cottingham and a daughter's quest for her mother's severed head. And you started that Facebook, uh, Serial Killers Need Hugs, too. I kind of like, I mean, I'm kind of bizarre, too, you know, the, kind of, the dark sense of humor I always liked about you. It's, it, takes, it takes some time. It's something you don't really want to swallow. You don't want to hug a serial killer, and I right. really didn't want to hug him, but it was easy because he's in a wheelchair incarcerated with dentures. And yeah, yeah, it's a he's weird 73. thing. He was a, he's a monster, still is, but when you see him, he's Chris Kringle. He's an old, bad Santa. Right, ba basically. Wow. And I just had to get rid of the fear and face him myself. And that helped you personally. Yeah. And ways. so you don't feel any hatred or anything against him no. because of what he did? Not at that current time, not now. No. I did. I carried hatred for him for many, many years. So since you met him, you stopped hating him? Yes, I forgave him in you 2016. Him. Okay. That's pretty hard. I mean, whether he could control himself or not, he just destroyed lives. He's right. a heinous well, person. But when it came to me, I couldn't sleep oh. at night because I was scared that someone was going to kill me, and I thought it might have been Richard. So mm -hmm. I wanted to eliminate. I stayed up many nights with the lights on. I was scared. Even though you knew he was in prison. Even though I knew he was in prison. This, this just overtook what you, this we, paranoia. What we spoke about earlier about you should warn your daughter about, you know, everyone should have the fear that they might get killed because there's so many killers out there killing. So don't really? Really? think you're not going to... Are we exaggerating, though? I mean, I mean, every, I mean, they're out there, but the chances are low. I don't want to set up... You know. I wouldn't say so. I think they're greater now. Well, you know, statistically, serial killers are, are, are very rare, and we're living yeah. in a moment um, where, you know, certainly violence is on down. the downside, are murders down. are down, but we have just 24 7 homicides media. are down, but bad things always happen. Right. Yeah. You should always you know, be throughout wary. history. Right, right. It's always that, that, that fear that people have, and it's this kind of intrinsic fear, I think. Of course, of the unknown. Fear. I killed that yeah. fear yeah. when I approached him, and yeah. I made you know I made it known that he's an approachable monster, and if you are the child of a victim and you feel that you want answers, it's always good to just go, go to right the there and say, right. what happened? So it's kind of counterintuitive. Go to the source yeah. and, and, and it helps and you. Then, and now I can yeah. finish this chapter. Now, and this is something that they cannot avoid, they cannot stop doing. Yeah, it's an addiction. It's an addiction. It's an addiction. He said he couldn't go two weeks without something happening. And the compartmentalization was crazy. He had a wife and kids, and no one suspected and anything. And where, where is his wife, and where are these kids? I don't talk about the family. You give them Only the because it's so traumatic to what they what happened to them that there's imagine. no words. They are divorced. You know. There's no words. You find out your husband was just this other person that you never knew, and he was masquerading as a family member, as a lover, as a Father. You know, it's I asked that question of another wife, um, Marina Oswald. I asked her about Lee Harvey Oswald. Uh -huh. um, and her, oh, you better. Oh, okay. Yeah. And her uh, comment was, the wife is always the last to know. Right. Interesting. 
interesting. That's so interesting, though, because my wife probably knows everything because she sees me all the time. She's, always, she's right. <laughs> I don't know if I can get away with it, but I guess you're a master manipulator I, when I, you're a killer. I think that's very suspicious that you're now bringing that up. <laughs> oh. No, but I guess, no, but really, though, you said you get to know each other, right? But I guess a master manipulator still Absolutely. gets away with it. Yeah. No I matter mean, what. Not only did he have a wife and children, he also had two different mistresses at the same that time. That he wasn't hurting. Right, he yeah. treated them like mistresses. Yeah. I mean, that would be and hard he enough, you think. He you was... think having a mistress, having an affair, and, and then having he a had job. plenty yeah. of prostitute yeah. friends that he'll, to this day, say, I, I had a lot of friends that were, were hookers. Wow. So, and he didn't kill the lovers. Because that could be an excuse. Well, you know, I well, have two, I have two affairs, and I have a wife and children. I I rather get rid of them. His mistresses um, testified in court in his defense, Jeez. saying that he was very sweet, romantic. That absolutely, you know, there was nothing kinky about him or vi wow. violent. Um, That's something that intrigued me as well. I wanted to know psychologically what was wrong with him. I didn't see anyone make any prognosis, and I. I wanted to know, do you have um, a double life? Do you have, do you have, what is your disorder, man? But what, to allow him to do that and what, just close the door to one life, go to another one and go to another one. It just is extremes. Are, yeah, are, it's either that or he only has one life and all the other lives are like these fake satellites. But he plays it well. Up. But he plays it well, he though. He plays it very well. Right? And there's no remorse. There's no ah. guilt. There's no freaking no. out. Uh, no. A no lot worries. of men still do this, and there's some women who do this, have a secret life after their 9 to 5 life. And some some of them put on wigs, and some of them, you know, I'm not saying... It doesn't have to be all sexual, but they do different things, right? right? Yeah. Like looking for Mr. Goodbar was kind of like that with the famous Richard Gere and stuff. You know, we were discussing that in the green room, too. Maybe the stress, you know, of, of their ordinary life sometimes drives them. To want something else. The boredom of it, the stress of it, right. the, you know, the heavy weight that you carry, you know, right. kids, house, mortgage. Uh, wouldn't it be great to be free? Also, right. during would the time... Would it be good to kill somebody? During well, the time... Most well, people don't kill people, though. <laughs> during the time when Richard was actively killing, he was leaving work and seeing women in collars in the windows on 42nd yeah, Street. Yeah, I remember that time And in that's New York. a scary yeah. thing yeah. for a gentleman to fight those um, impulses to want to do sexual things when these women are in collars in the windows. He's watching them. He's seeing women on the street say, hey, I'll do whatever you want for 50 bucks. Well, you're not. But that, my point is, this is when so I'm going to get segue a little bit. Then you get some, for lack of a better word, feminists who go, that's where you have to outlaw pornography. But most people see this and don't do what Richard Cunningham does. The, they try if, to draw. If you degree. hashtag BDSM on uh -huh. Instagram, you'll see fifty thousand people that like what Richie likes, and that's. But they don't kill people. I mean. How do you know that? Oh, I don't. <laughs> well, I think it would come out eventually. I mean, uh, there'd be a lot more murder. So. Well, so. I think people are hiding bodies better. Oh my God. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, you're in this more than I. I couldn't say, but what do you what, what well, do you think? You know, um, I'm going to say that um, our monsters are serial killers, and that you know, as I write in Sons of Cain. Uh, literally, werewolves were serial killers. Um, the, the mythology of the so werewolf it's, it's in our DNA comes from you know from that. We we couldn't imagine humans doing that, and so we invent these mythological creatures, these werewolves, when actually there were human beings. Um, and of course, there was no pornography at that time. Mm -hmm. So um, it's it's a lot of things in our culture that um, serial killers use to script their fantasies. Um, not just necessarily pornography, but, for example, there were all these men's adventure magazines, true detective magazines that were, you know, sold where Time magazine and ladies' home and journal was, was, was sold. Um, those inspired serial killers. They, you know, they got their, not their ideas, but, but how to express their fantasies and script the end to what they need, they feel, to do. Um, comes from that kind of literature, comes wow. from our, our culture. We essentially teach our serial killers what the fantasy is. Because it's out there and they can grab it. Yeah, in the way that Jack the Ripper was inspired by Victorian era pornography. Right, right. And the press, and they had the press and to the play press, to and everything. Yeah. Well, and what's, what's the future like? We have the book, what else is going on? Tell the camera. Oh, should I have the book? <laughs> So indeed, we're um, you know working on uh, as I say recovering the the heads and reuniting uh, the heads with the with the torsos. Uh, there's a book deal for Jennifer's story and kind of a definitive history that that Richard Cottingham has agreed to share 
Um, you know. And the book's available. Let's give the, the market. We have a marketing side to this. Yeah. The book's, where do you get the book? The websites, anything else? Sons, Sons of Cain is available um, everywhere. It's uh, in Labyrinth Books here in Princeton, uh, Barnes & Noble, <coughs> it's on Amazon. So wherever books are sold. It was sold. reviewed in the New York Times and everything. Uh, yeah, that was a great break for Rolling me as an Stone. author. Rolling Stone in, in, uh, oh, interview. Wait, 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 we don't have that book. Well, I guess we'll get it now. I know. I told you. And what about you, Jennifer? The web. Besides working with Peter, um, are you gonna, uh, you're doing the website. You still have the Facebook page. Serial killers need yeah, hugs. Yeah. After we finish with this, I will. We re do something else really extreme and cool. Okay. <laughs> I don't. I didn't have a fixation on killers. It's just, really a hard act I had a fixation follow. on finding out who my mother was. That was. Yeah. Yeah. I know. But it just opened up a lot of that. Right. You, well, you've always been curious. You've yeah, been that's out. why I can't and wait also, for it to be over because it was really weird to do. And also, with. you're breathtakingly, you're very honest and open, and, and you took it this journey, and, and it's added to another path to it with yeah. Peter and everything. But also, I um, might sound crass, make some money off it, <laughs> too. Be, I'm serious, so, you know, make a living, make a love, you know. Absolutely, you know, and yeah. it's, it's a story to tell. It's a story, I, I think right. Guys like me write books to essentially tell stories. Right, right. And this is it. an amazing story. I'd love story. to do something for the kids of. Uh, incarcerated parents and right, I, right, right, right. I think it's great to to just <clears throat> teach simple stuff like forgiveness and children who've had to deal with trauma maybe uh, art therapy I'd love to do stuff with gotcha. the kids so it's a segue yeah. into that yeah. that's what I mean right 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 yeah. and we have a lot of that unfortunately I work sometimes in Trenton and everyone knows someone who got killed in Trenton I mean these are people who've been traumatized kids young ages right. or their dads are gone or something either in prison or which is almost like death because they don't see them well, you know the scary killed. part is of course if trauma is the key to a serial killer to a child 20 years later becoming a serial killer those I'm reading a kids, book that is called you know, um, that you're encountering right now who are getting traumatized they're, they're know, getting molested yeah. they're seeing loved ones killed there's no now, stability what happens to them 20 years later and these yeah the next wave of, of, of serial killers to come. And you know. not even serial killers, because I think they're rare, but yeah, they do act up, act out in antisocial ways and yeah. don't benefit anybody. It's I'm scary. reading a book that is called The Pathology of Evil. It's about Hitler, but I'm just in chapter number three. Okay. But it started with his um, youth, grandparent, the father, and all that. So I'm just starting. So in the last 20 seconds, what are my problems? No. <laughs> <laughs> Where Thank do you. I start? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for well, having us back, though. Oh, Jennifer, you're always welcome back. And Thank I'm you. glad that Willie got to you. And I'm, Peter, I'm glad to finally meet you. I heard a lot about you. Thanks and hopefully you'll come back in another year and we'll see what the sequel, the next book again is? Yes, the next Raptor. book. Raptor. <laughs> we'll check it out. And that has been Peter Varansky and Maybe Jennifer Weiss. He has other books, too. <laughs> Thanks. And this has been another amazing Breathing with Beerman. My wife's about to steal your book, but she's Fine. on a Serial killer, but she'll take you. I'm a serial book stealer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and serial thank, we'll see you next month. And female serial killer.